This is the ladder of nature. We humans are at the top. We are the best life forms. The life forms most similar to us are just beneath us. Being up here at the top so close to the gods and angels is great. We are so good. To understand life elsewhere, we can start by looking at how we have organized life on Earth. And where do we fit in, or where do we think we fit in to the life on Earth? Now, let's take a historical look. About 2,000 years ago, Aristotle came up with something called Scala Naturae, or the Ladder of Nature. And this was very influential for at least 1,000, maybe even 2,000 years. So here's Aristotle's scale of nature, from highest to lowest. Now, on the highest is man, and the lowest are minerals. Down here are plants. And then we have cephalopods. Up here is man, whales, and birds. And here's some examples. And uh, well, they don't have primates in here. I'm not sure he knew about monkeys. And they don't put any fungi in here, so I'm not sure where he thought they would belong. Um, now, this is interesting. He divided according to blood. Everything here has blood, 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 blood. But then without blood, starting with crustaceans and cephalopods, squids, and octopi, no blood. So obviously, it's better to have blood. And then over here, something called soul, which has a rational, a sensitive, and a vegetative component, RSV. We have all of that, especially that R, that big R is rational. Other things are sensitive and vegetative, sensitive and vegetative, and that's only vegetative down here. What's that? There's a plant. They are not sensitive, I guess, <laughs> and the minerals have none. So that's one way of looking at life. I should say that this Aristotle's ladder of nature is like a, a phylogenetic tree. The higher you are in the Arist Aristotle's ladder, the more similar you are to a human being. So it's essentially saying everything that's close to us is really good and everything that's far away is bad. But the ladder that he created does uh, seem to map on almost, well, pretty carefully, with uh, this phylogenetic tree. With the exception he missed the monkeys and the apes, and he doesn't put fungi where they belong. Now, how we fit into nature has been a something that's been going on for a long time, but in a, let's see, this is, in, this is like in the 13th century, there's a guy named Raymond Lull, and he drew this picture here, and it's delighted as Auf and Absteigs, the ladder of ascent and descent of the mind, 1305. So, in the, basically, there's a ladder here. You start out with non-being, <clears throat> and the things that are becoming, the realm of <laughs> being, and uh, being, then there's God and the sons of gods and angels and demons. There's man, animals, plants, minerals. So there's a, definitely a hierarchy here going on. You start out down there, and then you become something. He also wrote, interestingly, how to overcome someone's objection to being converted, because they, Spain was taking back some of these islands in the Mediterranean. They had to convert people from Islam to Christianity, and he wrote a book about it. Now here, let's look at 1579, the great chain of being. Here's a picture, and you can see there's a hierarchy here, and we've got a chain here, the great chain of being. And the God, God is up here, then the angels, then there are the kings and queens and commoners, then there are animals, then there are plants, and then there are non-living things, and then I think this is hell. So there's definitely a hierarchy here. More recently, 1745, Charles Bonnet, who's a very good uh, biologist, had this. This is an idea for the uh, scale of nature. Now let's blow it up. It's too small to read, so let's blow up the first part of it. It says, man, orangutan, here's four, let it, let it, there's birds, here's fish, here's serpents, there's snakes, and then in the middle they have coquillage, it's a, you know, a shellfish, shells, insects, plants, and then at the bottom they have, let's say, rocks and metals and sulfurs and water, air, and fire. <laughs> and so that's Charles Bonnet's scale. More recently, we have things like the major transitions in evolution by Smith and Zathmari in 1995. And on the cover, this is the picture, and you can see it's very much like a scale of nature. You have minerals at the bottom, and then plants, and then animals, and then man, some type of, uh, I don't know, Macedonian male. Uh, this. And then this becomes this, and this becomes this, and obviously we're the best. So to be a little bit more fair about what's in this book, you can read some of the details here, but basically it's a ladder. Now, a problem with major transitions, or saying, oh, there are major transitions in life, 
is that they're defined to be the ones along our lineage, the transitions that led to us. In other words, the transitions they're talking about are along that lineage. <laughs> However, along every branch of this tree, there are major transitions. We neglect them because they didn't lead to us. That's kind of unfair. If you have to talk about this, there are major transitions along that branch. There are major transitions along that branch. There are major transitions along that branch. Uh, no, no, they're not important. They're not major transitions because they didn't lead to us. We're the best. Now, there's a couple of other books I'd like to complain about. <laughs> Life Ascending, for example, by my friend Nick Lane. Ten Great Inventions of Evolution, and here's Nick. All right, so what are those ten? Here they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Origin of life, DNA, photosynthesis, eukaryotic cell. Now, life is ascending when it is becoming more like us. Now, that's a little bit, I don't know. <laughs> All of these, except photosynthesis, are on the lineage that led to us. The implication of that, of course, is that uh, life on other branches has not ascended. Now, in 1871, Charles Darwin wrote The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex. Bernowski, in 1973, 102 years later, wrote The Ascent of Man. So uh, descent and ascent are kind of like the opposite things. But in the literature and elsewhere, you can read things like the members of the class mammalia are the most highly evolved of all animals. <laughs> the human immune system is the most complex of all immune systems. I heard this from a, a doctor who was studying human immunology. And the human ribosome is the most complicated of all ribosomes. <laughs> Stephen Jay Gould had a nice reply to this such thinking. Look in the mirror and don't be tempted to equate transient domination with either intrinsic superiority or prospects for extended survival. My good friend Richard Dawkins wrote, the vanity of the present, of seeing the past as aimed at our own time, as though the characters and histories play had nothing better to do with their lives than foreshadow us. Here's a 1959 phylogenetic tree before there were genes, uh, or just as DNA had been discovered. And uh, I call this the Schwarzeneggerization of life because Arnold Schwarzenegger does this, this guy's doing that. We have a male bodybuilder, obviously life leads to that. That's where all the major transitions are and that's where life should go. <laughs> it's the Schwarzeneggerization of all life. Everything, there are the plants over here. Fungi don't even get, they're just marginalized. They're off the plot here. Uh, the transitions in the evolutionary pathway that led to Homo sapiens are often considered to be the only fundamental transitions in the evolution of all life. That's what this tree implies. Many Homo sapiens think they are more evolved than other life forms. What is wrong with such pride and self-interest? Well, I think in the context of Are We Alone, it reduces motivation to look for other life forms. And it damages the ability to recognize other life forms and answer the question, are we alone? Being so far up, it's hard to appreciate other life forms. Where are they? Where are they? I can't even see. Ah, there they are. Why do those other life forms even exist? We humans have a long history of such self-serving classifications. This speciesism may be the largest obstacle preventing us from finding and understanding other life forms in the universe. Mm. 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 Ugh.